In this video, uh, I will be explaining how to do uh, motion maps so that we can describe motion using uh, a graph, a formula, a table of values, and now also motion maps. In the first example, a car is moving to the right at a constant velocity. If we took one picture every second, it would look like this. So if you imagine uh, a stroboscope where the light blinks every every second and we put all the pictures all on one frame draw a motion map of the car okay so the first thing I've done is drawn uh, an x-axis to indicate position so really this x here means position and I like to use the x letter for horizontal position and if an object was moving uh, vertically then I would use the Y letter. So uh, instead of using P or D or something like that, I'm going to use X for all of our uh, motion maps. And this will be the origin, or this will be position zero, and you'll see in this direction is positive. So I could go uh, to the negative direction as well, but I'm just going in the positive. So now I need to add uh, little dots for where the car is. So I'm going to put the dot for approximately where the uh, the bumper of the car is, because in this point I could take the center, but I'm going to take the bumper each time, and I'll draw a dot there, I'll draw a dot here, I'll draw a dot there, and a dot there. So th that's the position where the car was at each second and now I'm going to add on there an arrow each time now I'm going to use the arrow I'm going to make it about half the distance between the dots will be my arrow and the last one there isn't another dot to go but the length of these arrows indicate how fast it's going so the relative velocity so since I'm talking about velocity I'll just label the first one V to indicate that those are velocities. So that's what the, the motion map would look like. The top one is just your your, your x-axis, and this is talking about the, the dots of the where they are at each second, and then the, the arrows. Example number two, if the car were traveling at a greater velocity, the photo might look like. Now, notice that if there's, a again, a picture taken each second, now the car has gone further each time. So what would that look like? See if you can draw one yourself right now. So then I'm starting again with my x-axis drawn, and I'll draw dots for where the, the object is each time. And you'll see as a natural consequence, because now the objects are spaced farther apart, because they go farther in the same amount of time, now my arrows get longer. So you can see the, the length of the arrow gives us a, a sense of how large that velocity is. Uh, draw a motion map of the car with greater velocity. What changed? Well, I guess two things. Uh, the, the biggest one is the arrows are longer, is the big one, and the dots are farther apart. Okay, now example number three. If the car were traveling to the left at a constant velocity, draw the motion map. So why don't you try hitting pause and doing this one on your own and see how it goes. So again, I have my motion map, and, and this would be the origin. That would be the zero spot, and this is going towards the positive. Uh, now the car is uh, first here, and then it's here, and then it's here, and then what changes is that, again, I'm going to draw the arrow halfway to the next dot, but because it's going to the left, my arrow goes to the left. And it's going at a constant velocity, so that my last one should be about the same length as the other ones. And again, I can put a V by it, just indicates that it is a velocity arrow. Uh, example number four, more complicated motion can be represented as well. Uh, could we describe this motion in words? Well, I guess the first thing we could say is, where are we starting at? Okay, so uh, the object starts now not at the origin, but someplace to the right of the origin. And now, uh, this would be uh, at time equals zero, that would be the first dot. This would be at time equals one, time equals two, 
at a time equals three. So the, for the first three seconds, it travels at, and now these arrows are the same length, so it travels at a constant velocity. At a constant velocity. For three seconds. And then what happens? Well, here at t equals 3, t equals 4, and t equals 5, it stays in the same spot. Then it uh, stops moving and stays in the same spot. Okay, and then it last it moves left at a slower. But still, these arrows are the same length, so at a slower constant velocity. All right, going to the other side. Consider the interpretation of the motion map of two cyclists. So this is something new. I have uh, cyclist A, here's cyclist A, and I have cyclist B. So there's cyclist B. I've got two different cyclists going on here. So uh, cyclist A starts uh, to the right of the origin, right of origin, and moves, well, at a slow constant velocity. Uh, B, cyclist B starts, well, right at the origin and moves at a, well, these are longer, moves at a fast constant velocity. Uh, here's an interesting question. When does B overtake A. Well, now we have to think, okay, this is time equals zero, and this is time equals zero. So when we're starting the timer, A is further to the right than B. Here's time equals one, time equals two, time equals three, and if we look at the other ones, we see that they're tied at time equals three. So when does B overtake A? Time equals 3 is that moment, because after that moment, since B is going faster, B will be going past it. So we're going to say at, at time equals 3 seconds. Now we're assuming that each dot is taking place 1 per second. So could we make a graph of this same motion? Well, let's just see. If, if we say that a starts to the right of the origin. Okay, so first of all, we should label our graphs here. So um, this one is going to be time, and we're going to measure that in seconds. And this one is going to be our position, our horizontal position, x. Okay, and we don't know what units to put. I, we could put meters in there, but I'm not exactly sure if, if the, I don't have any numbers anyways. Um, so it feels a little strange that x goes up this way, uh, when x we're really talking about a horizontal motion. So um, a starts to the right somewhere. So a, when time equals zero, will be somewhere down the path. So it's going to start over there. And then it's going to be moving uh, at a slow constant velocity. Uh, I'm going to try to sketch a line here. Okay, so t is increasing and x is increasing, but increasing at a slow rate. So those of you that you know already that this slope of that line is going to be how equal to this velocity. So since this is a lower velocity, this is a less steep slope. So this one is cyclist A. Now let's consider cyclist B. Maybe I can grab a new color for you. Cyclist B starts at the origin and goes faster. So it's going to start at the origin and it's going to go faster. Trying to draw a straight line. Okay, it's something like that. And this is the interesting point at which they meet. 
And what time will that be? We already figured it out. That would be at three seconds. Okay, so we have a, a motion map of the motion. We have a graph of the motion. Oh, this is B. We should put that in blue. Last, a algebraic or mathematical expression of each one. Well, let's think about a straight line, a linear line, is going to be in the format of y equals mx plus b, or if we do like logger pro instead of mx, it would be kx. Okay, so now we've got to be careful because normally uh, our x is here and our y is there. So when we're talking about x in this formula, we really mean t. So like this x is this x means t. So when I replace this here uh, with instead of saying x, I'm going to write t. And I'll leave everything else for a second. When I'm talking about y in my kind of math formula, it means the, the vertical. And in fact, this is a little confusing, but that's actually going to be an x, which means uh, the position. So I'm going to say x over here. Now, this k is the slope, and we're learning in this class that slope is actually, of a position time graph, is velocity. So I'm going to say velocity. And now plus b means the y-intercept. Okay, so depending on the cyclist. Let's try the two cyclists. So for A, the uh, x value, the position of cyclist A, is going to be the velocity of the cyclist. And you know what I'll do is just to talk about the velocity of cyclist A, I'm going to say V subscript A. So that means the velocity of, of cyclist A multiplied by time plus whatever position, however far off to the right they started. So um, I could use B here, but another way of talking about that notation, if I say, uh, maybe I'll write a little note here, note, in this, in this formula here, x equals current position. Uh, uh, v equals the velocity. T equals the time. And instead of using b for the y-intercept, I'm going to use a specific one. I'm going to talk about the position when they started. And because that's what that means, the position when they started. So that x naught or x zero there. So x zero is going to be equal to the starting position. So plus x zero. So that's what it's going to look like for A. For B, very similar. The position for cyclist B will be equal to the velocity of cyclist B multiplied by how much time has gone by. Now for B, however, they don't have a starting position other than zero, so I can just leave that off. All right. And the one thing that we know is uh, that the velocity of A is less than the velocity of B. There's a little extra information. At the bottom of the page, and you know what, don't worry at this point if, if this is a bit confusing because we're going to do more practice with that. I just wanted to be able to relate to you the fact that we can have uh, motion maps and we can have uh, graphs and we can have um, algebraic or mathematical mathematical expressions all for the same motion. Just different ways to represent the same thing. So we are going to get into the habit of being able to switch between those three different ways to represent motion. Here's some hints about drawing uh, motion maps. Draw dots indicating the position of the object at equal time intervals. Uh, unless we say otherwise, you can say one per second. 
Attach the arrows to the dot indicating the direction of motion. Make the arrow length half of the space between the dots to make your motion map easy to read. It gives the added benefit because now the length of the arrow uh, gives you a clue about how fast it is. When an object is stopped for several time seconds, draw multiple dots at the same position and make sure your sequence of arrows has a logical flow so it's easily communicated. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense, for example, when we had this one, it went this way, and then we did dots, and then we went back again. So instead of drawing these arrows right on top, it would be kind of confusing. So here you can get a sense of, of how that one meant, uh, how that one uh, moved. All right, I hope uh, you found that uh, educational, and uh, we will see you in class.